start recording again. There we go. So we are recording just fine again. It's just that, um, all right. So the code that we are looking at today, let me see, where is that? It's this one. There we go. Okay. So the first subroutine that we are looking into is post ink, which is post increment. This is the same thing as what plus plus would do when you have your x plus plus or whatever variable plus plus. <clears throat> so the way it works is we have a local variable called return value. Return value is just a local variable to store what, it, what the function is supposed to return, which is basically what the argument or what the parameter is pointing to. So p var itself is appointed to an unsigned a bit integer, and whatever it points to is the return value before the increment. Then the next thing we do on line eight is to add one to the unsigned a bit integer that p var is pointing to, and then we proceed to return the value of p var before we increment it. Now, obviously, there are other ways to do the same thing without using a local variable, but the whole point of this exercise is to talk about local variables. In this main, uh, it has two local variables. Namely, we have x and y as the local variables of main. And then x is initialized to 3, y is, initial, y is initialized to the post ink, the result of post ink of the address of x. And then we also return the 0 here, missing a semicolon. There we go. So do we have any questions about the C code first? Because the C code is the example, so until we have a thorough understanding of the C code, I really cannot talk about the assembly code because we would not have any idea of what the assembly code is supposed to do. So do we have any questions about the C code? Okay, maybe I will do it this way. We'll just run the C code in GDB and find out what is the value of Y and see if that matches what you think the program should do. So before we do that, I want you guys to kind of take a quick look at the program as it is right now and tell me, well, don't tell me, but think to yourself, okay, or write out the answer of what you think x is going to end up with by the time we get to line 18 and what you think y is going to end up with by the time we get to line 18. Okay, so I'm just going to put a line of comment here. It is basically the same thing as y equals to x plus plus. So now the question is, do you remember what it means to be post-incrementing a variable in C++? So x is initialized to 3. We have a post-increment on line 17. And then the value of the post-increment of x++ is used to update ver local variable y. So the question is, what ends up with what ends up as the value of x after line 17, what ends up as the value of y after line 17. So that's a question that you want to be able to answer first, because otherwise, you know, the explanation of the assembly code is not going to make any sense. All right, so we'll go ahead and play with the C code first, okay? So we, <clears throat> oh, there we go, gcc-g-o inc inc.c. GDB Inc. Put a breakpoint on line 18 because that's what I said. I would stop or you know, pause the execution of the program, run the program, and then we print X. So what do you think X should be at this point? Mm, well, X is actually incremented, right? You know, even though it's a pre or post doesn't matter because we are on a separate line now. So x should be 4, because the increment should have applied to x. So x is 4. What about y? y stores the value before the increment, right? Because that's what post-increment means, is the incrementing of whatever you are adding 1 to is happening after we make use of the value of the expression. So as far as the expression x++ is concerned, it returns a value of 3, even though it has a side effect of incrementing x to 4. So when we look at y, it has a value of 3. All right, so do we have any questions about the effect of the code before we go look at the assembly language um, explanation? Okay. 
So if we want to track this program line by line, this is how we can do it. So we put a breakpoint on line 16, okay? We run the program from the beginning because I do want to make sure that everybody understand the C code first before we get to the assembly code, okay? Line 16 is pretty easy. X gets three, okay? You know, so you say, what is X? It is three, okay? Not surprising. We single step into post ink. And the first thing inside post ink is we look at whatever P var is pointing to, and then we <clears throat> uh, copy that value to return value. So the first thing we do is, okay, let's take a look at what P var is pointing to, or what is the value pointed to by P var. Now, since the argument to pass to, v, to P var is the address of X, so that means we're dereferencing the address of X, which means, oh, we're just getting back to the value of local variable X of main, which is a three, okay? So we single step, and at, at this point we can say, what is the value of the return value local variable? It is three, not surprisingly. So now we single step through line eight. Line eight is saying, let's take a look at whatever P var is pointing to, the, you know, whatever it's pointing to, and then we just add one to it. We already know what it is, okay? It is a three. We add one to three, we should end up with a four, but the four is stored to wherever P var is pointing to. P var has the address of X, which means local variable X of main is going to be changed to four. Are we doing okay so far with those concepts? Because those are the same concepts that you should have learned in CISB 360. Are we good so far? Okay. So now we single step through line eight. And then the first question is, are we really sure that X of main is incremented to four right now? We just incremented it. So how do we check that? How do we check that local variable X of main, which is not in post ink, is indeed a, has a value of four? What tools do we use? Okay, we describe, I described two commands in GDB that can be very helpful at this point. So one starts with a B, the other one starts with an F. Backtrace is one, okay? It shows us how we got here, so it shows us how to get back to the caller. Frame is the other one. It allows us to change our perspective. Instead of looking at things from the frame zero, which is in post ink right now, we can change our perspective to any caller along the chain from main all the way to here, okay? So BT is backtrace. It shows us, you know, we got to post ink because we call that from main on line 17, okay. But more importantly, we can also see that main is using you know, frame one. So now we can use the frame command to say, okay, let's switch our perspective. So we are not changing anything, we're, changing, we are only changing how, what we look at on the stack. So now we are gonna to change to frame one, which means we're now looking at things from the perspective of main. And then we look at the value of X, it is indeed changed to four. So we have just verified that when we add one to whatever P var is pointing to in post ink, it ended up affecting local variable X directly in main. Is that okay? So this is a concept that is only based on C++ concepts in CISP 360. And the tool that I use to, you know, to figure out, to verify all of this is happening, is not gonna be helpful only in this class, just to illustrate the concepts, but it's gonna be important in your other classes too. I would say particularly in CISP 430, okay? Because when you have recursion, and you know that something is not happening correctly, you wanna find out at which point did I make a wrong turn? Or if I make a change to whatever this thing is pointing to, what, I'm, what am I really changing? Do you have a theory about that? If you do, how do you check that? So these are the tools that can be extremely helpful in some of the more advanced programming classes that you may have taken, hopefully not yet, but you are gonna take you know, in the future. Okay, so now we can say, okay, let's go back to frame zero. There's not much else to do in frame zero because we just have to return the return value. But I still want to double check that the return value is three. So when I single step back to main, uh, not yet, there we go. So when I single step back to main, now I can say, 
Okay, what is the value of x? It should be incremented from 3 to 4. We just checked it earlier. And then we also want to check what is the value of y, which is based on the return value of post inc, and it should be a 3. So are we doing okay so far with the C code? I will give you both the C code as well as the assembly code at the end of today's class. So there's no need to copy the code, you know, in a hurry. Okay, but what you do want to focus on is, am I understanding the concept? I'm, am I making connections between those concepts? All right. So without any questions, okay, we are going to get back to the editing of um, increment. But at the same time, we are also going to work on the assembly code to implement the increment or post increment subroutine. So here is the TTP ASM in assembly code. So on the left hand side, we have the C code. On the right hand side, we have the assembly code. So the assembly code, yeah, by this time, you know, you probably know what we need to do. Okay, we're initializing the stack pointer to zero. The no op is mandatory because we are going to use the tool to run it and to trace it. So we need the no op, you know, because of a bug in Logisim. So now we're going to call main as if it is a regular function, which means we have to push the return address and then we make a jump. Yep. Are we, uh, we are indeed recording. So there will be two clips today. Uh, one clip, uh oh, you are very good. Okay, I'm glad you checked with me because it is recording, but it's not recording 